Okay, we're here to talk about um, the upcoming Rotman CSI program on wealth management. I'm Marshall Beyer from the Canadian Securities Institute. I'm a senior director here and responsible for our curriculum development. And I'm Walid Hijazi. I'm a professor at the Rotman School of Management. I'm also academic director of executive programs. And I'm also academic director of this specific program. And Rotman worked very closely with CSI in the development of this uh, Innovating Your Wealth Practice uh, program. We've jointly developed this program uh, in response to um, demand from uh, our in, from the investment industry, for, you know, for training that will help advisors adjust to the new realities uh, they're facing uh, in the marketplace. There are plenty of opportunities for financial advisors, given the growth in investable assets in, in Canadian households, that by the way is expected to double. Um, by the end of this decade. But with that, there's also challenges and, and, uh, and risks that, that, that come with that opportunity. Yeah, so as you mentioned, the amount of investable assets is gonna double over this decade in Canada. Um, and globally, we see a massive increase. But you know, the other things that we really need to think about are the headwinds for traditional wealth management practices. Um, those, those practices that think they can continue with business as usual, are going to come up against those headwinds. So this program is really meant to help them understand what these headwinds are, but also how to deploy strategies, how to embrace new technologies, how to think about how to turn these headwinds into opportunities. And that's really what we focused on in developing this program. Yeah, no, ex exactly. The, the, the new landscape that wealth advisors are, are facing um, is, is can be seen from different perspectives. One, the client base is, is, is changing. Um, boomers are um, have moving away from the accumulation phase of their life cycle to more distribution and transfer of their wealth. Uh, you're seeing uh, millennials um, increasingly having a greater you know, percentage of, of, of assets under administration and their needs and their experience and their knowledge of technology, for example, is, is, a, is a factor that, that has to be considered. And, and their expectations of, of a digital first client experience is, is causing advisors to have to shift their practice and, and uh, accept and embrace uh, new technologies. Yeah, that's probably the most important mm -hmm. trend mm -hmm. for traditional wealth management practices to think about, because to think that the way you practice wealth management over the past decade, over the past two decades, is somehow going to resonate with this new demographic. As you say, you know, so much wealth is being um, being transferred, mm -hmm. not just from boomers to millennials, but also mm -hmm. increasingly women are making investment decisions. Mm -hmm. And um, many, many advisors think that somehow they can simply change he to she, and somehow they have mm -hmm. the right wealth practice. And it's much more complicated than that. The other two big issues that are so very important with this movement of massive amounts of wealth across generations mm -hmm. and across demographics, number one is the rise of ESG investing. And you know, Larry Fink from BlackRock put it perfectly, and he talks about the, as a fiduciary, uh, it's your responsibility to think really hard about sustainability, but ESG more broadly. And millennials are twice as likely to invest in e with an ESG lens relative to boomers. So that's what they're looking for. Um, and also the amount of wealth, investable wealth globally committed to uh, companies or assets that are ESG focused is mm -hmm. now in excess of $30 trillion. So this is an opportunity, not a, not, uh, not a threat. But the other one that you mentioned is the number of self-directed investors is increasing dramatically. And if we want to capture that business back right. into traditional wealth management, you have to justify the fees that you charge. And it's not just about putting out nice marketing material. It's about creating a, an experience and, um, and relationships. Mm -hmm. And the program is really meant to help enhance your ability to develop these meaningful relationships to deliver value and being able to communicate more effectively with this changing client base. Yeah. You know, the business uh, is changing, is evolving. Um, the, the value add that advisors provide to their clients um, has, has evolved along with it. Uh, entering orders into the capital markets was a big value add 30 years ago. Yeah. And that's what advisors got paid for through commissions. 
um, with the advent of, of discount brokerage and, um, and, and even robo-advisors and who knows what artificial intelligence is going to bring in the future. Um, advisors certainly need to move up the value chain in order to justify their, their uh, with the, the payments that they're yeah. receiving from clients. You know, one of the big uh, objectives mm. of this kind of training, but training generally, mm. especially as it relates to new technologies, mm. is not to be threatened mm. by the advance of new technology like AI or machine learning, digitization or automation. So these are all interrelated. Yeah. It's not to be threatened by them, mm. but it's to see the opportunity yeah. in them. And, you know, um, in, in, in a global survey mm. um, that was just published last month, the vast majority of wealth management practices mm. are looking to partner with fintechs. Mm. But underlying that, really what that's about is adopting new technologies. Mm. So if I'm, a, if, if I'm a wealth manager, that's my core competency. My core competency may not be to go out and learn AI and to develop those algorithms. But for me to ignore that trend and that opportunity would be to my detriment. So the important question to ask is, what are the right technologies that would be appropriate for my wealth management practice? And what is the best way for me mm -hmm. as a wealth manager, a wealth management professional or manager to build a relationship with an outside provider mm -hmm. to provide that technology for me mm -hmm. and to integrate it into my practice? And, you know, there's a very famous saying, uh, Marshall, by by Peter Drucker, the guru in business, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Mm -hmm. So how do you integrate mm -hmm. all of these new technologies into a traditional wealth practice? It's not simply signing a contract with a fintech. It's about building that relationship and training your people. And this program is really meant to help uh, people in the industry navigate these complexities. So maybe we could talk a little bit about the, the program uh, itself uh, and, and some of the the topic areas and the instructors that are uh, they're going to be uh, delivering. The program will start out with uh, we'll, with Michael Kitsis, uh, a very well known uh, financial planning expert from the U.S. who um, is um, made a, quite a name for himself in, in uh, you know describing you know what changes are expected you know in, in in this landscape, and and he's going to lead off just talking about what disruptors there there. Are have been and will be in the future in the financial planning industry and how advisors can adjust to those uh, those dis disrupting influences. Uh, we're also going to have um, uh, Ernst & Young um, spokesman coming talking about the global uh, uh, wealth management landscape and some of the things that we've just talked about. Um, and, and we've got uh, some other speakers who are also going to just speak at a macro level on how the industry is changing. Yeah, and also mm. uh, Syntonic. We have the CEO of Syntonic coming in. And for those of you that don't know Syntonic, yeah. please look it up. It's an incredible company. Yeah. But you know this, Marshall. Many mm. clients make emotional decisions. Mm. And emotional decisions are those decisions that result in the worst outcomes. So right. how can you leverage mm. new technology to mm. nudge people to make the right decision? Mm. And, you know, with the increase in the number of self-directed uh, clients mm. who get a robo advisor and think that's it. They don't mm. have to pay as many or any fees or very low fees, mm. but somehow they think they're now liberated. Mm. But a lot of these people are emotional investors. Mm. And in some work that we did at the Rotman School, mm. where we looked at a large pool of investors, the absolute worst performers on the part of clients mm. uh, were those that had low financial acumen, mm. but were highly reactive in their personality. So if you think this through, what does that mean? That means these are the individuals that when markets go down, mm. they sell. Mm. And when markets recover, they buy. Mm. So that's completely the opposite of what you teach in business school. They're buying high and selling low. Right. And that's why our speaker, the CEO of Syntonic, is so important because this is all of this behavioral economics, this nudging behavior. And another thing for viewers to remember is the way you engage mm. with your clients to get them to do the right thing. It doesn't have to be through a big AI machine learning. Mm. That's obviously very helpful. Right. But just in terms of the way you interact with people, there's a lot of evidence to show that people are not making decisions that are fully rational. Mm. 
Uh, and that's why Kahneman and Tversky, this very famous book, mm. uh, but you think about nudging people mm. to make the right decisions, how you ask questions, how you frame mm. the conversation is incredibly important. That's why effective communication. So we have Maya Dijic, who's um, the director of the self-development lab at Rotman. Mm. We put thousands and thousands of MBA and executives through this. Mm. How do you effectively communicate? Mm. How do you I have a conversation with someone that um, allows them to really trust me and to have confidence in me? Mm. There's an art to it. And mm. this is what Maya will teach. As you said earlier, you know, we have to justify the fees that we charge. Right. And if the client doesn't have confidence in you, it's right. absolutely, it's so, it's essential. And that's what Maya will bring. Another way the industry has changed is that advisor generally, advisors are generally a part of a team uh, delivering different aspects of value to, to clients. So uh, now part of being an advisor is understanding how to work within a team environment. Um, um, whether it's for, through uh, referrals or whether it's through an internal team, and and and, and maximize the, the value that each that each uh, member of that team brings. So I know there's a component in the program that'll also talk about kind of leveraging your 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 uh, expertise uh, within your team. Yeah. So Jeff Leonardelli, who's a superstar professor at Rotman, mm -hmm. a professor of organizational behavior, he mm -hmm. teaches negotiation and team building. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, everybody watching this video knows how hard it is to go out and do business development and mm -hmm. you bring in a nice client you're really excited mm -hmm. and you know in some of the surveys that you and i have discussed marshall there's a big movement towards mm -hmm. clients that want holistic wealth management they really want mm -hmm. everything from one mm -hmm. trusted mm -hmm. um uh, uh, office i don't want to say family office because it doesn't have to be family office but right. Right. Uh, a wealth management practice which could be a family office um and not all of these offices are big enough to have all of the services that the client right. wants, but you have right. to be able to provide it to them. Mm. So how do I create a collaborative team? Mm. So part of that is negotiation. Part of that is thinking about contracting. But the last thing you want to do in, in a wealth management practice is to bring in a client, a high value client, and then have to share more than you have to with all of the partners. So how do you think about mm. creating a team to provide all of these services that increasingly are being asked for by high net worth clients and families, mm -hmm. uh, but to create a relationship where incentives are all aligned and you're able to deliver the best value because it's your firm, it's your brand, it's your client. Right. You have to sort of manage the team, right. which may be part of your practice or may be provided by other uh, other firms. No, exactly. And and another component of this is, is as... Um, Advisors are offering higher and higher levels of advice as, as, as part of the team. They've got to be ever more cognizant of their uh, compliance responsibilities and regulatory responsibilities to that client. And regulators have gradually kind of raised the bar in terms of, you know, in terms of those, those standards of dealing with, with clients and most recently with customer fo or client focused reforms, which, which again reinforce the import importance of know your client and know your product and, and avoiding or, or minimizing conflicts of interest. So in the program, we're also going to bring in a compliance expert that can talk talk to those issues as well. Yeah, and in the global survey that I referred to earlier, um, one of the um, most important mm -hmm. issues that wealth management firms globally are dealing with is with changing compliance mm -hmm. and for all of the reasons that you said. Mm -hmm. But another big result from this global survey is that there's go, there is consolidation in the industry where the big players are expected to get a much larger market share, which means the smaller players are going to have to be much more competitive. Mm -hmm. And as you say, you know, being much more transparent with your client in terms of fees, in terms of conflicts of interest, mm -hmm. all of these new regulatory requirements are really going to discipline wealth management firms. And you know, you have to be prepared for it. Mm -hmm. And this program is is meant. Uh, to, to really help in that regard. Another pillar of the program that's mm. really important mm. is, you know, you mentioned it earlier, Marshall, that, you know, with the younger generation, um, um, with the millennials and even mm. the Gen Zs, mm. they're much more astute mm. with technology. Mm. So the question is, how do I embrace new technologies mm. to give a digital experience, but at the same time, deliver the value of the firm to justify the fees that you're earning? Yeah. So how do you integrate new technology? Yeah. So John Ash is another professor at Rotman 
who um, he's a professor of integrative thinking. Mm -hmm. But really what he's going to be able to, to do is to help the, the audience, the people in the room think about how do I assess the internal environment mm -hmm. within my wealth management mm -hmm. firm? How to understand the technologies out there? Mm -hmm. How to integrate it? And it's not simply signing a contract with an outside provider. Mm -hmm. How do you think about it holistically so it works? So that's another really important pillar of the program. Yeah. And while the millennials, um, um, by the end of this decade, will, will comprise something like 40% of, of the investable assets, which is hard to believe. So that's where I think the pace de resistance of, of this program is with Tom McCullough coming in. Tom, not only an instructor at, at Rodman, but also um, a founder and president of his own family office and he's going to talk uh, about intergenerational transfer of wealth and and, and dealing um, not only the technical aspects of that but dealing with the family dynamics which sometimes is the more challenging part of putting together a, a plan for for clients yeah and tom mccullough for those of you that don't know tom you should look up his books he has mm -hmm. he's a, a award-winning author mm -hmm. he's incredibly well known in the family wealth business He's on the board of several international organizations in that area. He's a professor at Rotman. Mm -hmm. But when you think about you know, managing family wealth, you think about it from two perspectives. You think mm -hmm. about it, I've got the business, mm -hmm. and now how do I manage you know, the intergenerational um, dynamics of this massive ch movement of wealth? Mm -hmm. How do I think about the family legacy? How do I think about gift, gilding, uh, gift giving? Yeah. How do I think about all of these things? Mm -hmm. Um, an inheritance and mm. uh, and so on. And I learned from 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 Tom a decade ago mm. the big move. He was really ahead of his time, even ahead of these surveys, because he saw it. Because he's in the business, mm. is this move towards holistic wealth management? Mm. You know, this idea that you know increasingly high net worth clients and and families they want to deal with one firm mm. that and a trusted firm that can deliver all of this. Mm. But on the other side. Mm. If you're a wealth management practice and you're not really a family uh, a, a, a family office, yeah. how do you go about getting that business? Yeah. And so these are some of the insights that you'll be able to get from the program. So it's not just about which is the pasty difference, as you said, yeah. is about you know that family um, dimension to wealth management, yeah. uh, but also in thinking about how do I get that business. So it's it's an incredible program that covers. Yeah. It was a as you know we were in it together from the beginning, Marshall. Uh, mm -hmm. We thought about all of these issues and we put this program together with lots of changes from the first draft. <laughs> right. um, and I think it's, um, mm -hmm. it's a home run. Mm -hmm.